Tying Catskill style dry flies. We are on the third section, which in the book here by Mike Valla is chapter 9. March Brown. This is my favorite fly of all time. It's like the first classic I ever tied. And it's it's a really awesome fly. It's it's really cool. And this is how it is. And the buck, that wing looks a little high to me, but other than that, I like it. And it was interesting to see how this is a Roy Steenrod version, darker body, but yeah. And as we got more into maybe, I don't know, the 60s, 70s, it started going with a lighter body. And that's how we know it now, is a lighter body. Um, but uh, there's one other interesting thing about this fly that we'll talk about. It's the wing. First, the hook. We're using these old cocks, size 10s. Uh, I have them to follow along. If you check the description, I have two other videos. We're doing all 11 from from that Mike Vallow book, and we're going to frame them. And we're using them. We're doing them all on a size 10 all cock dry fly hook. Just trying to keep it classic. Let's get this centered. Yeah. And this one, just like the last one, we're going to be using this daddy wax thread. Now this is this is a serious thread. It's 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 heavy duty. It's it's 80 wax, so it's almost like 60. And I usually use 120 on 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 my dry flies. But just to keep it, just to make it a little fun, and and um, to, to just to try and tie a real classic one, we're going to go with this thread. Um, and yeah, so. We're gonna we're gonna get the wing on here now. I we start him. I'm, I'm gonna also tie him Catskill style. So with that little space up front. So we're gonna tie this on. Cut that waist off. And we'll come up to about here. Now there? Yeah. I'm always fighting with myself to try and figure out where to put it, but I believe that that's correct. Now the wing, it's wood duck, but here's something important. is It's not like your traditional wood duck. See that color right there? It's not, it's not your traditional, you know, lemony type light brown color. You actually need to use one like this. You don't need to use one. And you know, when I'm tying them just for fishing, well, when I used to tie them for fishing, I don't fish classics anymore, but when I when I used to tie them, I would use that. But since we're we're tying it like they did in the old days, you gotta use something like this. See the difference? Let me get that further back here. I think you could tell the difference, right? This is the one you want. Not this one. And um uh, I refer to this, I don't know, I've, I've, I've told this to a couple people, nobody refers to it this way, but um, remember I, I was talking to Dave Brandt at a show one time, and we were talking about the March Brown, this this particular feather right here, on from a wood duck, and I called it a transition feather, and he seemed to like that. Uh, so, um, that's, that's, that's what I refer to it as, a transition feather. Essentially, it's kind of in between your normal lemony wood duck you see on just a regular cat scale and the flank one. The flank is one with the bars, right? Well, this is sort of like in the middle and there's not many of these. Not many of these at all. So maybe like this, real dark like that, there might only be three, four, there could be none depending on how old the bird is. There might be none. Here's another one. Right. Here's one. It's pretty pretty dark. Right. Here's another one. See that? And 
it... There's one. But like this, you can see this. It's a little bit, it's a little bit darker than this one. Right? You can see that. Not much darker, but then when you go and you put it up against this, this has got the more, the, the, the heavier bars. Right? If that's clear. Heavier bars. So, it it can be real tricky to find one of these one of these really dark ones. And if if you do see one in a package, like let's say you go in and buy a dozen a dozen a dozen feathers, and you're flipping through the packages and you happen to see one of these dark ones, grab that package because uh, if you ever 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 want to tie one of these real classic ones. You need a, you're going to need one that's dark. All right, enough, enough, enough of the uh, history here. Let's really, let's, let's get a good one. This is the one I'm going to use. That is, that's, that's, that's about as, as dark as you're going to get it without seeing those flank bars. And we're going to, we're going to pull off some of the garbage. Now, you can probably see how dark that is. That's dark. And let's take a look here. Is that the right height? Yes, I like it. Now I just have three turns holding that on. Actually, I'm going to cut it over here. This is a dubbing body. This is a dubbing body, so you don't have to worry about being too smooth. Now we'll just post this. Oh, we got the mailman. Which means the dog's gonna start barking. Now, we got this flared out. Now all we're doing is just looking for the center. And if we think we got it, we just put one turn in. And we take a look. And I'm usually pretty good nowadays about finding the center. It's done it so many times. Yeah, and you can see how dark that is, man. That was a good feather that I picked. So now, now we're going to do, I only did one because I'm using this heavy thread. Uh, I'm sorry, I did a figure eight with one turn going either way. And now I'm doing a lash with only one turn. Normally I do two turns on the lash and two turns on the figure eight. Now we're going to still, we're going to do a Catskill style, but we're going to leave a little space. And the reason is, is because this is a March Brown. Technically speaking, it should be this size or maybe a hair bigger or... Basically, it should be bigger than a red quilt, which was the last one. Now, you want to be... Let's go back just a hair here. And we'll get the tail ready. The tail is just this. Just this natural brown right here. And, you know, seven or eight fibers. And we're going to tie down. And the reason I want to tie down from here is because I want to end a turn short. So, let's get this in here. Yeah. 
And I want to end a turn short so that when I go for the dubbing, I can make sure that the dubbing is landing on the right spot and that the thread is not showing through. Not that it's a big deal. I mean, this is the dubbing we're using. It's basically the same color. This is a little bit lighter the thread. Now I'm using a like a rabbit blend. That color right there. Now this is what I use when I fish. This is the color I've had this package for a long time. And it's a synthetic dubbing. To, it dubs on perfect, but I'm not going to use synthetic dubbing on a frame fly. We'll use something natural. And I think in the Val book he says actually like a light colored red fox. I'm just going to go back one more turn. So you see by doing it this way, now I can go down a turn, make sure you hurt, uh, hold that tail. And it also uh, gets, gets a nice taper on it because you're not tying a thread turn onto another thread turn. sticking out here. Just trying to keep it fairly thin. I think that that is good. Getting dubbing off. Ooh, very good. When you, when you twist it on tight, Damn near impossible to get off. All right, now let's. Uh, I think that's okay. Hackle, two hackles. Uh, we got a grizzly right there, and then a natural brown again. Now. This one happens to be that furnace I was talking about because it's got the black center, but the black center kind of disappears in here, and that's that's what you want. You, you you want this part. I mean, a little bit of black, I don't think it makes a difference, but usually the part that has the black is like a soft fiber, and it also has a little bit of a taper. You could probably see it's tapering, and we don't really want that. We want it to be, you know, uh, consistent the fiber length and I don't believe it matters which which one goes on first I'm gonna put the the natural brown on just put two turns on here's the grizzly Now, if you can get them the same length, that would be great. But, I mean, as long as one is the right height, and um, it's probably good, because it, it's going to mix up and you're really not going to see it. But if you can get them the same length, which is really tough, to be honest with you, it, it, it makes for a really good fly. I mean, the length of the, of the fibers. I'm just trying to make sure I got it on here. Just stop it right there. And let's get the hackle pliers. Now, the question about oops, I bumped my, my vice there. The, the question about how many turns. <laughs> it's a good one. I think you're gonna see the grizzly more. So if you put more turns on the grizzly, you're gonna notice it. So be careful on the grizzly. So maybe that's like one and a half in the back. And one in the front. And we're going to take this off so it doesn't get in the way. And this one we'll put a few more on. 
uh, the inside of the hackle towards the back. When you're tying that off, don't tie down if you want to keep that that space. You, know, you got to tie and then tie on top of it. It's, it can be difficult. Now I'm just going to take all these fibers and I'm going to fold them back. Maybe we can even fold these extra ones back. See now I went I went back when I when I did that whip finish because you can't go forward. Yeah. Yeah, that's right the front, the wing. That's pretty dark. That's the way you want it. That's it right there. There's a little space there. I mentioned Dave Brandt. I mentioned him in the last video too. Uh, he um, he's the one who actually taught me that that space. Well, he taught me a couple things. One is is that I I thought it was called a turtle knot, but it's actually called a turtle knot. I think a lot of people make that mistake. And it's a guy, his last name is Turl. And I think he was in the military. I'm not sure in the US or the UK, most likely UK, because they always everything started there. But uh yeah, he, he his last name's Turl and he came up with a knot. And this is what everybody thinks is that space there is, is for a turtle knot. Uh but no one knows for sure. It makes sense though. But you you only see it in the cat skills and if I don't know if the knot was created somewhere else. Why why would we be the only ones? Who knows? Who knows why it was there? Um, I'd love to know the first person that started doing it, that's for sure. It could be just something that people did to let you know you were getting something from the Catskills. I don't know. Something something different. But um but uh yeah. So, March Brown. And nowadays, if I tie something March Brown related, I don't use a, a grizzly and a brown. I'll use a, um, I just use a, a Cree. And, um, Cree is, Cree looks like this, right? That's a Sidling Hill Cree. And I tell you, this is this funny, because originally, when I, I, I bought a whole lot of, of hackle on eBay close to 10 years ago and I remember it listed in the description that it had a Cree cape and I knew that they were rare this is the one that came in it I knew it was rare but uh, this is not cape I'm in a neck but you know I didn't know what they really looked like I just knew that they were rare and this thing came and I was like wow I got Cree it's, it even says it right here it's from Mets like they're not gonna screw around there it is right there Cree and I'm like, this thing is awesome. Um, I mean, nowadays this thing would probably be, if this was Cree, which it is not. <laughs> if it was Cree, it'd be like 75 bucks, probably. Maybe back in the day it was like 20 bucks. But, if you put this next to this, you can see the difference. It's a massive difference. This, right here, that's Cree. This thing, bar ginger. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, this is barred ginger. I mean, maybe you want to consider it a very, very light creep, but I would not use this for um, for a March Brown, like alone. To create this this grizzly brown mixture, I would use this, and that's what I use. And, and I have a Quigley Cripple March Brown up on the channel. I can link it at the top. And uh, that I use just 
the Cree from that sidling hill cape. And I just got some just got some hairs hanging off. The um and it looks great. And it's just a great way to reduce bulk just by using one hackle, right? It looks great and it reduces bulk. And I can tell you, if you're using this thread, you gotta reduce bulk. This is tough. It's really tough using this this thread right here. But I'll tell you what it does do. It teaches you how to save turns. Every turn matters. Every single turn matters. So, all right, March Brown. March Brown, my favorite fly of all time, for sure. Absolutely. All right, thanks.